Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to put this Kenmore washer into diagnostic mode and access a few hidden features that may help you troubleshoot and fix your washer. To do this, all you need is a quarter inch hex head screwdriver, so let's go ahead and start. The first thing we want to do is find the technician sheet, just in case the washer is slightly different than the one I'm working on in this video. So let's open up the top of the washer by removing the three screws circled on the back of this washer in the video. One's for a harness plate and the two others allow you to remove the top to pivot it backwards. Next, to allow the washer lid to pivot up, once the screws are removed, you'll pull the lid towards you, then pull upwards, then push back towards the rear of the washer. This will let you pivot the washer lid on the small metal pieces on the back of the washer freely. Of course, you should tape the lid down prior to lifting it. Whoops. So let's tape it down real quick. Now with the top taped down, I can lift the lid and find the service manual, which is located on the front left corner of the washing machine. Also note that I did add a support behind the washer, as this unit is not in front of a wall to support the lid when it's leaned backwards. Now I'm going to enter diagnostics. With the unit plugged in, I like to turn the dial counterclockwise until it's set in the 12 o'clock position. And I try to ensure that it's rotated fully once. From there, you're going to turn the knob to the right three times, left once, then right one more time to enter diagnostics. Usually you'll want to allow half a second between each turn. You'll know that you've entered the diagnostics fully by all the green lights flashing in unison once you've entered the mode. You can continue to turn the knob clockwise to enter the different diagnostic modes, such as error code mode, automatic test mode, manual mode, recalibration mode. There are other modes past this, but they're generally factory specific and you really aren't going to need them. First, we are going to turn the dial back to the error code check, which will illuminate the cycle complete light. When we press the start button at the cycle complete light, this will engage the error code mode to see if the unit has any error codes available that could stop the washer from working. Once you press start, all the lights will flash. Turning the dial clockwise will begin to display any error codes if they exist on this machine. You can continue to rotate the dial clockwise to get up to four stored codes on the machine which will help you troubleshoot what is wrong with the machine. Once you get to the fifth selection, all the lights will flash again, and if you press and hold the start button for approximately five seconds, all codes will be deleted if in case the codes are errant or extremely old. Now, if you have a code, this is what it will look like. As the Kenmore I am using for this video didn't actually have any. Each code is a series of green lights, starting with the sensing fill light being illuminated. If the sensing fill light is green, then any other lights being on indicates a letter F code. If the sensing fill light is not on, but the other lights are, this indicates the E code. Combining the letters with the numbers, which are added with the other lights, will tell you exactly what is wrong with the machine. For example, this is an F0E5 code, which means an unbalanced load has occurred, which may have stopped the machine from spinning out properly. All errors on all washers made like this use the same system, but sometimes there may be additional codes available on newer machines, which is why we got the tech manual out earlier from the front of the washer, if in case the error code you have isn't on the list I'm ready to give you now. The code list here is pretty long and extensive, so we are going through them with only a few seconds for each code. Make sure to pause the video if needed, or skip forward until you get to what you need as far as codes, as all of these codes are in order based on what are available code-wise for this type of Kenmore washer. Generally, Whirlpool and Maytag will only add new numbers to the codes rather than change the actual meaning. So if you're watching this video well after I made it, you should be able to still get an idea on what the code means because they've never changed the F5 code for a lid lock in 10 years. If we go through the list of codes and possible solutions, remember that these codes are only what the washer knows is wrong and could be related with the part, but not the part itself being entirely faulty. For example, a wire to the motor could have gone bad rather than the motor itself, or a capacitor, or even a wash plate at times can cause a motor code. The codes are a good place to get an idea of what could be wrong rather than what is absolutely wrong, so take these codes with that understanding. Another thing to note is that these codes should work on other Whirlpool built washers from Kenmore, Maytag, Admiral, Amana, and Roper, among others. 
I have noticed, though, that on some older machines with the green oval lights, that the later codes like F8 and F9 may not populate on the washer. So again, check the hidden service manual to verify if and when you can. Now remember that once the codes are cleared, you'll need to re-enter the diagnostic mode. The second mode after the error codes is the automatic test mode. Pressing the start button will have the machine run through all major components and modes in a very short period of time to see if any issues or problems will pop up when they run. One caveat to this is that if there is a problem, you are not going to be able to see it because the lid lock will engage, causing you to be unable to open the lid. That's why we have kept the washer top unlocked earlier in the video, but there is another trick to keep the lid open when you run tests that may be a little bit more elegant. With the lid lock of the washer up, we are going to take a Torx T8 or maybe it's a T10 screwdriver and unscrew the two small screws holding the lid striker in place. Once the screws are removed, we will slide the striker off the top of the lid and insert it into the lid lock. This will trick the lid lock into thinking that the lid is closed when it isn't. And recognize that doing this is very dangerous to open the lid in the 900 RPM spin mode as you or anything you could care about could be damaged, so do this at your own risk, please. Once you press start, this is the automatic test procedure. Now, I didn't film this part in action, but I do have another video on this process and the card for it should pop up on YouTube. The automatic process runs in the order as follows, and if anything fails, you can physically see what failed the test and allow you to quickly isolate what is wrong. This test should take, in total, approximately three minutes. Next, the selection on the diagnostic menu is the manual test. It's similar to the automatic test, but you can instead select whatever mode you want the wash to run on so you can further isolate any problem that you have. Now, to enter the manual mode, simply press the start button and rotate the dial to the desired selection that you want. To begin the test, simply press start to start and then stop the action with the same button. As you rotate the dial, various light combinations will light up and these are the modes that will be ran if you press the start button. Do note that the lid must be locked in order to perform certain functions like spin and agitation, so you will need to activate it, which is the first option, before you use those modes. Also, please note that there are many other options on the dial that I'm not listing tests for. This is because it is for a test for a future option that is not available on the washer that I tested. You can refer to the tech manual to make sure that they haven't added an additional mode in this selection. When in the manual test mode, once you have finished everything you have needed in this mode, you'll need to press and hold the start button for approximately three to four seconds to cancel out of the mode. This will return the washer to the off position, so you will need to re-enter the diagnostic code to get back in to do any other tests. The final thing that I want to show you is the extremely important recalibration mode. Once in diagnostics, rotate the dial four times clockwise until the rinse light is displayed. To begin, press the star button. This will physically reset all the major components on the washer, plus initiate a quick test to verify. This is required every time you install a major new component such as a shift actuator, control board, lid lock, and so on. This ensures the washer will adopt and utilize every new part properly into its fullest ability. In the case of this recalibration, it took about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. It could be longer or shorter depending on your machine. Once this is done, the machine will turn all the lights off and you are ready to begin using your recalibrated, corrected washer. Now we can re-secure the lid to the washer, install the three rear screws, and now everything is done for this washer. I hope this video helped you understand your appliance more, but if it didn't, make sure to leave a comment, subscribe, and then join our Appliance Discord discussion group by checking out the description below.